teach a so-called black, Hispanic, and native Indian history. But it's going to be a little twist on it because it's going to be history that you're not usually used to it being brought out. Okay, so we're going to give it to you from a biblical standpoint. Okay, uh, let's, let's get to the next slide. All right, so first I'm going to give you a little bit quick history about us. Uh, Israel United in Christ was founded in 2003. Uh, our goal is to change the hearts and the minds of our people. Blacks, Hispanics, uh, and Native Americans must learn the truth that they are the biblical 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. And disobedience to God's laws has been the root of all our troubles. Blacks and Hispanics everywhere suffer the same racial, social, economic problems worldwide. Voting has not helped us. Christian churches have failed us. It is time for a change in these last days. We must give the Bible the medicine to sick people, then and only then will things begin to change in our communities. Okay, so let's get the next slide. Let's get started. Louder. I got you. Okay, for sure. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, and verse 15. Come on. But it shall come to pass. If thou would not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So really quick, this is just a little bit backstory, a little history of what's going on. If anybody has a, any biblical history or, or knowledge concerning the Bible, you had the nation of Israel that were slaves in the land of Egypt under Pharaoh Ramses. Okay? They served 400 years of slavery. And then God used Moses. He appeared to Moses in a bush and sent Moses to deliver his people. Now, after they were delivered out of the land of Egypt, after the ten plagues, he went to, up to the mountain 40 days, 40 nights, and received commandments, right? And he delivered them to the nation of, to the nation of Israel. He taught them the God's commandments. And right here is a prophecy concerning whether Israel, if they kept God's commandments, they would get blessings. But we're about to read the flip side. If we broke God's commandments, there were going to be punishments that God was going to put on the nation of Israel. So read that again. But it shall come to pass. So Moses says it shall come to pass. You know what? It's a future prophecy. That's what this is going into. A future prophecy. Come on. If thou will not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. The voice of the Lord thy God is what we refer to as the Bible today. Okay? The word of God. That's the voice of God. The Bible. Come on. To observe. To do all his commandments. Uh -huh. And his statutes. Which I command thee this day, uh -huh. that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So God said, if you, if you this day will not keep the commandments, nor my statutes or judgments that I deliver unto you today, I'm going to curse you as a nation of people. Meaning what? This entire nation, we're going to go through generations of problems, bad situations that was going to occur to them, and it was going to be a generational curse. Meaning it's going to be on them their children, their seed, and their seed after them, and so forth and so on. Read the next verse. Cursed shalt thou be in the city. Come on. And cursed shalt thou be in the field. Who here has ever heard of the Tulsa Massacre? Anybody's ever heard of the Tulsa Massacre? The Tulsa Massacre was something that happened uh, in the early 1900s where you had a, a young man that was blamed for whistling at a white woman, a so-called white woman, right? Right. She was blamed for doing that, and they pretty much destroyed an entire city. Uh, they pretty much destroyed an entire city, right, for that, for a false accusation. Mm -hmm. But the Lord said that the nation of Israel, no matter where they would be, they would be cursed in these different cities. So, and, there's, and this is just one example right here. We also have an example which is called, today called Lake Lanyard, which is formerly known as Oscarville in, in Georgia, which was also another small town full of black people, right? And it, of course there was other people around, but it was full of black people, and again, it was also destroyed, and now they covered it in water and it's now created a lake. So in any city, especially when we first came to the Americas, right? In New York, these were the first things that were sold on Wall Street. And New York is a major city here in the Americas. Okay, so read it again. Verse 16, cursed shalt thou be in the city. Uh-huh, so God said these people were going to be cursed in the city. Read. And cursed shalt thou be in the field. And cursed shall we be in the field. Let's get some examples of the field. Here we have pictures of, uh, of black people 
servant or a servant of slavery in a cotton field. Our history, we served, we were cursed in the field by picking cotton. We were cursed in the field by picking tobacco. We were cursed in the field by picking sugar cane. All of these things happened to an entire nation of people, okay? And this was not just for 30 years, 40 years, 50 years. This was happening with, uh, with a generation after generation after generation. Because you gotta think, we're dealing with a God, right? He's not just dealing with just one specific person. He's dealing with us as a nation of people. And he's talking to the nation of Israel, right? What I'm showing you is that the people that identify as so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians today, those that were of the diaspora of the uh, transatlantic slave trade, the Sub-Saharan slave trade, this is who the Bible is talking about. But they forgot who they were because of the, the punishments of God for breaking his command. Okay, next slide. Read on. Cursed shall be thy basket and thy store. So it says, cursed shall be thy basket. A basket is something that you carry, right? And it says, cursed shall be thy store. So what is this? Going into our black businesses. A lot of our black, a lot of our businesses do not thrive in America. Whenever we open up, they tend to uh, close down within the first three years. And also, it's very hard for us to even save, right? We go, we work all our lives, and it's very hard for us to save money and to leave something for our children because we always stack with bills and top of bills and top of bills and fees and all of that. So God says we will not be able to prosper in any of our businesses or our uh, endeavors that we have. Why? Because we continue to break His commandments. We continue to break His rules, right? Because that, that's what all commandments are. There are rules to life. He created us and he taught us how to live on this earth. And if we did not obey them, these were the conditions that he was going to force us to live in. Okay? Um, let's, next slide. Read that. Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body. The fruit of the body is going into your children. We got to think, again, in history. Um, Especially in the South and in Florida. Here you have a depiction of so-called black babies. Here we were called, our, our children were snatched from us late at night to uh, go by swamps and they'll put them right there by a big branch in order to catch an alligator, which is where you get your gators. They got the nice little bags or the shoes and whatnot. They would use those skins for that. But they took our children and used them for gator bait. That's what they were called. Here, even when you examine the uh, so-called Hispanics, when um, the conquistadors came here in 1492 and they conquered the Americans, a lot of the natives' children were actually dashed against rocks. They were fed to dogs. This is, cursed shall be the fruit of your body. Read that part again. Earth shall be the fruit of thy body uh -huh. and the fruit of thy land. You see that? So it says, cursed shall be the fruit of your body and the fruit of thy land. Give me the next slide. Again, when the conquistadors and the English came here, they robbed the so-called Native Indians, right? Because whose land was this originally? And again, all we're teaching is history. All we're showing you is history that is prophesied in the Bible. Because a lot of times we become very distant from the Bible and we think that, okay, those are the Bible's times, that was thousands of years ago. But we really fail to realize that the Bible is very relevant to us today. And it spoke about us in these days. Okay? So here we got an example of uh, an Indian land for sale. Okay? They got fine lands in the West. Irri it's, uh, it's irrigated or irrigable, so you can pretty much raise or grow crops um, for, for grazing, agriculture, dry farming. They were selling other people's lands that did not belong to them. But again, who did these lands belong to? The Israelites. It's just today we identify them as Native Americans. Today we identify them as Hispanics, Mexicans, Puerto Ricans, Cubans, right? Colombians. Say it again. Chinese. The Chinese. Chinese are actually considered Moabites. They are in the Bible, but they're considered Moabites. Okay. You got a question? No. Continent in Africa. Say that as well. Republican, a Republican okay. Party, you know, from America. It's a Republican section uh -huh. in Africa. I don't know why that happened. Yeah. I didn't know we. And then we had a war that from, from the government that uh, the citizens didn't know we were fighting. They were fighting. 
Yeah, you had absolutely. You've got Israelites that is in Africa as well. Northwest Africa, Northeast Africa, South Africa, West Africa. Okay, because remember, where did the slave trade pick? Where did the uh, the, uh, the the slave traders pick up their slaves from? Well, uh, West Africa, Africa, right? Yeah, London is very close to Africa on the map. Yes. Okay, I'm sorry, did you have a question? Okay, next slide. Again, it says, read that, verse 19. Verse 19. Cursed shalt thou be when thou comest in. So medium, cursed shalt thou be when thou comest into this world. Again, this is a segue from cursed shall be the fruit of thy body. So cursed shalt thou be when thou comest into this world. Me. And cursed shalt thou be when thou goest out. Meaning cursed shall we be even when we die. How will we coming into this world on this side of the world? We were coming in as slaves, right? We were being born as slaves. And we were dying as slaves. Sometimes we die and we're hard labor. Right? We literally work ourselves to death. Here we got a few examples of uh, a few slaves that was born and died a slave. It's got Tony Thompson right here. We got Matilda McCreer. And we have Zora Neale Hurston. Okay? These are people that were cursed of our ancestors that were cursed coming into this world and cursed coming out of this world. All right? You got another question? Next slide. Uh, the Afro American in America, because of the uh, prices, the economy, see my dog. We're in America just to die. That's Say that it. It seems as though the Afro Americans just they live in the country in America just to die. They can't afford to live here. We can't afford to live. Now, back in slavery day, it was somebody that wanted to go back to Africa. I forgot where it was. But you wanted to go back to Apple when we were free. But now we have a house cost so much more. I'm going to show you that. I'm going to show you that in the Bible. We're going to get there. Um, read this. Verse 20. The Lord shall send upon thee cursing, vexation, and rebuke, uh -huh. and all that thou settest thine hand unto for to do, until thou be destroyed. So it says, The Lord shall send upon thee cursing, vexation, and rebuke. All of this is going into like trauma, right? It's going, to, it's going into oppression. It's going into um, you always feeling weighed down or oppressing. Somebody's always after you, right? Read on. It says, until thou be destroyed and until thou perish quickly. Read on. Because of the wickedness of thy doings. Because of breaking God's rules or breaking God's commandments. Statutes and judgments, right? Read on. Whereby thou hast forsaken me. Come on, next slide. So here we got examples of cursing and vexation and rebuke. Here, right here, we have the Ted Landsmark assault in assaulted in Boston. Okay, we have right here, um, yeah, Trayvon Martin. I forget this brother's name right here. Lamar Aubrey. These were men that were gunned down unjustly. Anybody ever felt like uh, ever gotten scared? Whenever uh, uh, a uh, uh, local authority got behind them, even though you were doing nothing wrong, especially back in the day in the South, right? You, you ever heard of sundown towns? Mm -hmm. These were. This is called vexation and rebuke. That's what that's going into. You're always in a high stress level environment, and you have no no uh, no surety of your life. That's what this is talking about. These are examples that we that we experience today. Even up to today. Come on, next slide. Read on. The Lord shall make the pestilence cleave unto thee uh -huh. until he hath consumed thee from off the land, whither thou goest to possess it. So back then the Lord gave pestilence, but even till today the Lord sends pestilence. Let's get the next slide. Here we've got COVID-19. That's very that's very recent. That's a pestilence. This is going into diseases, right? Yeah. Uh, right here we have H1N1, or also, uh, also known as the swine flu. These are all pestilences that came. Okay, we've got Ebola, we got the Zika virus. All of these pestilences were sent on the earth. Why? Because of breaking God's commandments. And God said his people were also going to experience these things for breaking his commandments. Okay, next slide. What is the swine flu? Say that again. The swine flu. The swine flu. It's pretty much, uh, they, I guess they took some cells from the pig and they created a virus and it became, it, it, it spread. Pretty much. Uh, 
Yeah, read that. Right. Verse 22. The Lord shall smite thee with a consumption, and with a fever, and with an inflammation, uh -huh. and, and with an extreme burning, uh -huh. and with the sword, and with blasting, and with mildew, and they shall pursue thee until thou perish. So these are all environmental issues or sufferings that we were all going to experience again as a nation of people. Who is this concerning? So-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Indians, and those of the slave trade, the diaspora. All right, next slide. Come on. And thy heaven that is over thy head shall be bright, uh -huh. and the earth that is under thee shall be iron. Now this is actually talking about two things. This is twofold. First is going into famine. Okay, so the Lord was going to allow us to be able to send rain in order for us to grow our crops and our land. But this is also going into slavery, and I'm going to show you. Give me the next slide. Here, remember, it said, above thy head it shall be brass, and below it shall be iron. Right here, you have an example of a man that's having a, uh, a brass muzzle over his head so that he cannot talk, and there's spikes coming out of it, so if he was to ever try to escape and go through the woods, they would hack onto trees, so you'll never get too far if you ever try to run. All right, here you also have another example of a, of a slave with that same uh, shackle around his, uh, around his neck and his head, but on his feet, you have shackles of iron. That's what this is, and he's working in a tobacco field. Give me the next slide. Same thing right here. You got this iron right here around his neck, and then you have these brass bells. So every time he moved, even like right here, you would always hear him. So if, again, if you tried to run, uh, uh, a slave owner or a trader would be able to hear him and say, oh no, I gotta run away. So that's what that's going into. Next slide. Read on. The Lord shall make the rain of thy land power and dust. Uh -huh. From heaven shall it come down upon thee until thou be destroyed. Again, okay, going into famine. All right, read on. The Lord shall cause thee to be smitten before thine enemies. Thou shalt go out one way against them, uh -huh. and flee seven ways before them, uh -huh. and shall be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. Next slide. So here's an example of the cattle in Athens in 1375, all right? During, uh, when we were in Africa, before we became slaves, we were smitten, all right? We were smitten by uh, so-called Arabs today. Okay, and we warred with different African nations within those lands, and we were caused to be spread throughout the west coast and south coast of Africa. All right, so here you'll see different areas where we were actually living at. This is a, uh, an old map, okay? Go to the next slide. And right here is going into the trans-Saharan slave trade. So a lot of times we hear a lot about the transatlantic slave trade, but before we crossed the Atlantic Ocean, we were also enslaved by uh, Arabs, okay, during around the desert, okay? So that's what this is going, and we were scattered throughout Africa and Saudi Arabia. So this is how we were smitten seven ways, read on. And then, go ahead, and then afterwards you had the transatlantic slave trade, right? Where you had so-called uh, African nations and Arab nations selling slaves or Israelites to European nations, okay? Next slide. Read that. And thy carcass shall be meat unto all fowls of the air, uh -huh. and unto the beasts of the earth, and no man shall fray them away. And when we were being conquered, a lot of times they didn't bury our bodies. So what would happen? You would have ravens or crows or eagles that would come down and eat the carcasses of our dead bodies, right? So that's what's going on. Next slide. Here is an example of it. It's called the Wounded Knee Massacre. Even over here in the Americas where they slaughtered Native Americans and some of our people and they threw them in ditches because it was a lot of bodies. Nobody took the time to, to actually bury them properly. So the best decision that they could come up with was let's just build a really big trench and just throw them all in there. And this is an example and they took photos of it. These, again, these are things that happened to the Israelites, okay? Because what you'll never find is terms like African American in the Bible. I'll get your question in a minute. You won't find the term Mexican in the Bible. You won't find the term Puerto Rican in the Bible. You won't find those names, but you will find Israelites in the Bible. <laughs> what you're going to find is that all nations on the earth is recorded in the Bible, but they're recorded by their ancient names, okay? And we have scholars that have identified who these people are. What we are showing you is that these people are the same Israelites or the people of God that's written in the Bible, okay? So when you look at the Bible, this, you're really looking at yourself. You're reading about yourself. You got a question? 
Uh, why is it that Caucasian people don't like each other? I mean, Jews and Germans, we had our first war, in America we had a world, the whole, the whole world was fighting. Uh -huh. Jews and Germans don't care who hit it up. I don't like to call it brotherly warfare. They don't like We're we here to teach history. We're mm here -hmm. to focus on black like history. What? I get, you, I get you later. I get you later. Uh, let me get the next slide. Okay, so here we got also the conquistadors dealing with the so called Native Americans and Hispanics, and they were feeding them to the dogs and they would strip mm. them of their clothes. This is what happened in the Americas. This is what was happening all across Mexico, Puerto Rico, Texas, California. This is what was happening. Next slide. Come on. The Lord was mighty with the box of Egypt and with the Imran and with the scab, and with the itch, whereof thou canst not be healed. So what is this talking about? Different diseases of the body, plagues of the body, okay? I know we have a history, a lot of our sisters have a history of uh, going through hemorrhoids. Let's get the next slide. Here we got an, an internal hemorrhoid, and we have an external hemorrhoid. And here we have a brother that has, or sister, that's got a body full of boils. These are all types of diseases or plagues of the body that would come across us, come upon us because of breaking God's rules or breaking his commands. Everybody following so far? Next slide. Read that. The Lord shall smite thee with madness. Madness. Read that, finish it. And blindness and astonishment of heart. So again, remember, these are words that were translated in old English, right? So a lot of times people would think this is going to uh, just being angry. But that madness there, anybody ever heard of somebody, an uh, English person say, oh man, he's going mad. Anybody ever heard of that before? Yeah. What, what are they saying? No, he's going crazy. <laughs> so read it one more time. <laughs> the Lord shall smite thee with madness uh -huh. and blindness and astonishment of heart. So he's dealing with the mind. He's dealing with our constitution of mind, our sound mind. So God said he was actually going to plague his people with not having a sound mind. So you have people that have, have uh, that would be going through mental illnesses, right? They'll have uh, some, some type of psychological issues. They'll have all these different things that's going on with their mind, but it's due to traumas. Everything that we read them before, it all leads up to having a, a uh, being smitten with madness and blindness, not literal blindness, it's talking about blindness of the heart and the mind. You're not able to really decipher or uh, live a, what they call it, um, a good social life, so to speak. Being a good civilian, so to speak, right? I think they call it a, a good contributor to the, to, the, to, the soul, to the world, something like that. But read on. Good spirit. Say it again. Oh, it's good spirit. You're not in the sound mind, right? What is all this medication for? Medication? Protection every day. Some people are even on well, medication is, is created to help, you know, to help these ailments. Um, read that. And thou shalt grope at noonday, as the blind grope at the dark. So it says you shall grope at noonday. Noonday, right, which is known as when the sun is supposed to be at its highest peak, right? So that's when it's brightest in the sky, right? So you should be able to see. But somebody that has to grope, meaning they're not able to see, you ever come out of a room and be pitch black, and you can't really see down the hallway, but you just got this memory, so you're looking for a wall, like, okay, this is the wall, I'm gonna come down this way. That's what it's talking about. You're groping, but you're groping at noonday when you're supposed to be able to see. So read it again, again. This is going based off of the astonishment of your mind, the amazement of your mind. Come on. And thou shalt grope at noonday, as the blind gropeth in darkness. As the blind gropeth in darkness. The blind person can't see. So you especially can't see in the dark. You're not really literally blind. So this is explaining the blindness in verse 28. It says, and thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind gropeth in darkness be. And thou shalt not prosper in thy ways. Uh -huh. And thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore. So how do we grope at noonday as a blind gropeth in the darkness? Because again, it's talking about the astonishment of your mind. So in order to escape our conditions, we always try to be to politics. Okay, politics, politics is the way. Maybe democratic is the way. Maybe being a Republican is the way. A lot of times we try to go to religion. Maybe religion is the way. A lot of times we try to go to uh, black economics. That's the way. 
So we're always groping, trying to get out of what? The conditions or the curses that God set upon us from breaking his commands. But the noon day is, no, all you got to do is keep his commandments and he will lift those curses off of you. It's really simple, but we cannot see that. We're always trying to find our own way. Read it again, verse 29. And thou shalt grope at noon then, as the blind gropeth in darkness. Uh -huh. And thou shalt not prosper in thy way. And therefore, since we won't follow God's commandments, and we're trying to find our own way to escape our problems and our conditions, now it says we are not going to prosper in our ways. It's never going to work for us. It's never going to work. People will always say, why can't, why can't uh, so-called blacks and Spanish just pick themselves up by their bootstraps? We got immigrants that come into the country and they're able to do this and we created this. It's because God put curses on us and he is our power. He is the one that put, these, put us in these conditions and he's the one that's going to get us out. So therefore he's not going to allow us to prosper in our ways because he wants us to return to him. Otherwise, he would never need them. Right? You would never need them. We love our children. We want our children to always love us. We want them to always come to us whenever they need something, right? the same way that God deals with us. We're his children. And God wants us to love him just as he loves us. Right? So read on. And it says, and thou shalt be only oppressed. And thou shalt, go ahead. And thou shalt only be oppressed. And thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore. Uh -huh. And no man shall save thee. And no man shall save thee. Next slide. So, this right here is going into the different environment, going back into that being smitten with madness. Again, we got mental and health uh, disparity factors like mental issues, what? Poverty, uh, racism, discrimination, uh, violence. All of these different stressors is what caused us to be smitten with madness. They call it what? Trauma, right? Uh, PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorders, right? That's what that's what that's what the Bible is talking about, and those things are high in the so-called Black and Hispanic uh, community. You know, next slide. Here, remember it says even during uh, the late '60s, we got the uh, so-called Civil Rights Movement. Okay, you have uh, uh, organizations rise up like the Black Panthers, all for what? Fighting for against oppression. That's what it means to be talking about you shall be oppressed and spoiled. Spoiled is going to be robbed evermore, meaning we were always going to be under some type of tyranny or oppression as we live for breaking God's commandments. So here again, we got an example of Martin Luther King. Martin Luther King tried to save us from our oppression, but he was murdered. We got um, Emmett Till right here. This is another example of oppression and being spoiled evermore. Um, Again, about the Civil Rights March, we shall overcome. All of this was us trying to find ways or groping at noonday to escape our problems. But they, we never prospered. We're still in the same conditions, if not worse. If not worse. Next slide. We don't thou shalt be troth a wife, and another man shall lie with her. Uh -huh. Thou shalt build a house, and thou shalt not dwell therein. Uh -huh. Thou shalt plant a vineyard, and shalt not gather the grapes thereof. Uh, so it says, thou shalt betroth thy wife, and another man shall lie with her. Back in the day, they used to call them bed wenches, where you would have a slave master that wanted to entertain his guests, and every now and then they may have some, some cake or some wine or whatnot, and he'll reach to his slave master's wife and say, hey, I need your wife. So this is talking to another man shall lie with her. Thou shalt build a house. We built the big houses. We built all these different things. We, we built a lot of America. Everywhere we was at, we built those countries, and it says we would not dwell in them. We don't dwell in those places. It says, and thou shalt, not, uh, thou shalt plant a vineyard, and shall not gather the grapes thereof. We didn't reap the benefits, or we weren't paid for our, benefit, for our labor for in cotton fields, tobacco fields, sugar cane fields, all those different, uh, different plantations or various plantations. We did not prosper from them. Next slide. So again, here we got, uh, this is a painting of three young white males and a black woman. This is an example of another man shall lie with your wife. This actually happened. Next slide. Here we got the movie uh, 12 Years a Slave, where this man, he was actually a free man. And I guess he went to work somewhere further and then he wound up becoming a slave and you had another slave master that's about to deal with the wife that was given to him while he was a slave. All of these things are 
it's history. But at this time, it was written as biblical prophecy. So these are prophecies that came to pass and has now become our history. What we're showing you is that the Bible is a true book. Next slide. Okay, here's got another example with Will Smith or another man. It's, and sadly, we even do it to each other. We portray these things to each other. So everybody, I don't know if y'all are aware about the Will Smith situation at the entertainment, but you had another man, uh, artist, rap artist, um, or R&B singer, August Alcina, that slept with his wife. Next slide. You know, verse 31. Thine ox shall be slain before thine eye, and thou shalt not eat thereof. Uh -huh. Thine ass shall be violently taken away from before thy face, and shall not be restored to thee. Now notice, well, read on. Thy sheep shall be given unto thine enemies, and thou shalt have none to rescue them. Uh -huh. Thy sons and thy daughters Stop shall right there. So it says, thine ox shall be slain before Come thine on. eyes, and thou shalt not eat their rub. Give me the next slide. Let me show you something. Here we have, here that happened in the Americas, where you had the uh, U.S. Cavalry, they slaughtered millions of buffalo. Buffalo was the main, or bison. They were, it was the main uh, food that the natives ate, right? So they were having a struggle with fighting the natives in order to get the land. So what they did was they tried to starve them out. So they slaughtered all the ox, all the cattle that was free roaming all throughout the land and they got a whole pile that's going on right here. This is what the Bible is talking about. Because again, it's geared towards blacks, Hispanics, and native Indians. This is how you identify who the Israelites are today. Excuse me, Reno, go to the next slide. Again, here you got the hide of all that cattle and that they were selling off and trying to get rid of after they, after they slaughtered all the uh, bison. Come on. Next slide. Read that. Thy son and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thine hand. Raise your hand if anybody seen the movie Roots. Roots? Anybody seen the movie Roots? Oh, yeah. Remember the one scene yeah. where you had a family, it was a slave family. You had a, a, a father, the wife, the mother, and a daughter. And the, the uh, slave master was going into debt. He had to find a way to make some money so that he could keep his plantation. In order to do it, he had to slave, he had to sell the daughter of the two other slaves. Mm -hmm. So read that verse again. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Uh huh. And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. They were running. The mother was running out. There's the scene where the mother was running out the house and begging for the slave master not to sell her daughter. And he said, if you sell the daughter, sell me too. Just take it. Just do not separate me. There was, but there was nothing she could do to get her daughter back. We had no military might to get our children back. We had no economic might to get our children back. Even when they came and got us from the west coast of Africa, as a nation of people, they, we had, there was nothing we could do to prevent us from becoming slaves in the Americas. Again, Bible prophecy has become our history. So come on. Next slide. Here we have an example of in Puerto Rico, 1898. Uh, this photo was taken by George Davis. Here we have a nation, a people of slaves, children that are slaves under another nation of people. Here we have uh, visuals or little postcards of, again, these are children slaves. Children slaves. Where are their parents? They're not with them. Next slide. 33. The fruit, the fruit of thy land and all thy labor shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up. And thou shalt not be only oppressed and crushed all of it. So here, this is going into colonization, right? Being colonized, okay? Again, the conquistadors and the English, they were not from this land. So another people was already occupying this land. They call it historically colonized, right? So it's another people that doesn't own this property, but they come and occupy it and they overrule it where another people is already occupying it. So somebody else, is, that's like somebody coming to your house, eating up all your food in your refrigerator, like, man, who is you? That ain't your food. You ain't asked for that. That's what happened here in the Americas. <laughs> that's exactly what's going on. It says, the fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up. 
That's like somebody coming into your home, breaking in and just eating up all your food, and then they, they just did this. They say, you know what? Sit on the couch. It's my house now. This is what happened to us. This is what happened to the Native Americans. Come on. Next slide. Okay, here again, we got another nation that came to the Americas or to the islands, and there, where people was already occupying it, they made them, they forced them on hard labor, and they ate up the, and wrecked the benefits of it. Next slide. Again, us in the cotton field. They're taking the resources from a land that is not theirs, and they're actually reaping the benefits versus the people who it actually belonged to. Next slide. Read. Verse 35. The Lord shall smite thee in the knees and in the legs with a sore box uh -huh. that cannot be healed uh -huh. from the sole of thy foot unto the top of thy head. So again, this is going right back into those, uh, the different the box of Egypt that we read earlier. I believe it was like verse 25. It's just going into the same different place. Some of us here in this in this uh in this home might have might go be going through some of this stuff right here. These are again, these are punishments that God put on the nation of people for breaking. That's his leg like that. Yeah, that's his leg. Some of us may know people that's going through these uh, ailments of the body. Some of us may know of people. Some of us here may be actually going through some of this. What's wrong with him? Read the read that verse again. The Lord shall smite thee in the knees and in the legs with a sore botch. That's a sore botch. You've been smitten in the legs with a sore botch. Yeah. Yes. Go ahead. And all of this stuff is very, believe it or not, is common. These are common diseases. He's got a very extreme case of it, but these things are common. Next slide. Thirty-six. The Lord shall bring thee, and thy king, which thou shalt set over thee, unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. Uh -huh. And there shalt thou serve of the God, wood, and stone. Read it one more time. The Lord shall bring thee, and thy king, which thou shalt set over thee, unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. So this right here is going to one nation being brought from one place to another place and being forced to serve different religions. Okay, it's talking about one people and their king and their leader. Watch this, next slide. So it says serving wood and stone. When we think about wood, right, you think a lot of times the two major religions in the world today is Christianity and Islam. When we think about the wood, we think about the cross. Next slide. You see that? This right here, we think about Catholicism. Anybody that thinks about wood, you think about the cross, you know, think about Jesus being uh, hung on the cross or whatnot. These are different gods, because again, the Bible is talking about things that are happening in these last days. So how do, I, how do we identify them? Okay, next slide. This is right here is in Rio. This is the building of Rio. You got um, uh, an idol of Jesus being built right here in Rio. Go ahead. Uh, then we got one for Islam, and then it says snow, the stone, right? You think about it in Mecca, right? They worship the Kaaba stone, which means black stone, okay? That's another, uh, the second largest religion in the world. The, we were forced, just like under sub-Saharan slave trade. When you had some of the slaves that came to the Americas, some of them were Muslims. Why? Because their former slave master was a Muslim. So they were forced into Islam. Some of us came and were, when we was in America, we were forced into Christianity. That's how we all became Christians. That's how so-called Hispanics became Catholics. These were religions or ideologies that were forced upon us, and we accepted them because we didn't want our, our conditions to get any worse, right? <clears throat> Next slide. Okay. And thou shalt become an astonishment and amazement, right? But again, we're talking about curses. So these aren't amazements of the good things. This is the type of amazement that's bad, right? <laughs> so, read it one more time. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, whether the Lord shall lead thee. A proverb is another term for a stereotype. So we have different words that we call them today. Stereotypes. That's what a proverb. A proverb means a wise saying. Excuse me. A stereotype. And they're wise because, unfortunately, sometimes they happen to be true. For example... Uh, black people have a stereotype for always being late. Or black people have a stereotype for loving watermelon. Black people have a stereotype of loving fried chicken, right? 
Uh, Hispanics uh, have a, or give me a byword. A byword is a word that's being called outside of your God given name. So you're being called, you got different labels on them. They call us Negroes, porch monkeys, coons. They call Hispanics wetbacks, right? And they're all based on, these are all negative connotations that will, that will be placed on the Israelites, again, for breaking God's commandments in all nations, okay? So wherever they were scattered, wherever they were brought to, these are the curses that we went through, okay? Uh, when you think about Proverbs concerning Hispanics, you'll say they got a real big family and a real small car. You know, you'll see, uh, uh, I don't know, I say a Mexican family come out of a Honda with like 12 people in it. These are different Proverbs. Unfortunately, they've done it before, right? Uh, next slide. Here, right here, we're known for our women being overly sexualized, mm. men for hanging their pants uh, below their behind. Okay, next slide. Uh, read that. Verse 38. Thou shalt carry much seed out into the field, and shalt gather but little in, uh -huh. for the locusts shall consume. <laughs> Thou shalt plant vineyards and dress them, but shall neither drink of the wine nor gather the grapes, for the worms shall eat them. Uh -huh. Thou shalt have olive trees throughout all thy coast, but thou shalt not anoint thyself with the oil, for thine olive shall cast thy his fruit. So this was back when we were in our land, right? And the Lord cursed our crops, he cursed our olive trees, he cursed all of those things so that we couldn't eat the fruit thereof. All right, next slide. All right, here this also happens in South America, okay? These are all the conditions that our people are being pushed in where we don't eat thereof. But we pick and we harvest all of these different uh, crops, all these different resources for other nations to reap the benefits of. Next slide. Read that. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. Saying the same thing as verse 32. What you're going to find out is in the Bible it says it's very repetitive, it's redundant, okay? So sometimes it says the same thing that it said before, but in another wording. So it helps explain exactly what it said before. So just as we said, how we read, our sons and daughters shall be given to another people, but we shall not enjoy them. Here it's going to explain why we won't enjoy them. Because they shall be given into captivity. In today's term is called slavery. We're talking about the same thing. You got a question? Okay, uh, I read where uh, where Prophet Muhammad, I mean, Elijah Muhammad said, the Holy Quran said, read all religions. Say it again. The Holy Quran said, read all religions. We have different cultures in America. Uh -huh. And uh, it said that uh, Moses was uh, Pharaoh. Said Moses was Pharaoh. I'm explaining. Moses was Pharaoh. He changed his identity, and he was Pharaoh. And and he came back in Israel's camp and got to their meeting, listened to their meeting, and eased back out to, to Egypt, and then he uh, put them back in slavery again for another 40 years. I don't know if it's a myth or not. Yeah. And he said that Prophet Muhammad was buried. First of all, Prophet Muhammad wrote the Holy Quran through Revelation in the same cave Jesus was crucified in. And he said that uh, Prophet Muhammad was buried in the same cave Jesus was in. So, okay. Yeah, I haven't heard that history before. Uh, read that one more time. We'll have to look into that. Read that one more time. Thou shalt beget sons and daughters, but thou shalt not enjoy them, for they shall go into captivity. So this is why we were not going to be able to enjoy our children. Remember, it said they shall be given to another nation of people and we will weep and wail with, uh, for longing for them all the day long and be not be able to get them back. This is why, because our sons and daughters were going to go into slavery, okay? What nation of people did this happen to? Because God is speaking to a specific nation of people. You said Negroes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's how it happened, it happened to them. It happened to Puerto Ricans, so-called. It happened to so-called Mexicans today. It happened to so-called Native Americans today, right? Colombians. Um, uh, who else? Uh, well, Amer white women was white women was slaves in uh, Europe for a yeah. chance for America too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, next slide. Here, right here, this is a servant, our children serving uh, in harsh conditions and hard labor here in South America. Okay. Mm -hmm. It says Dalits and Saudis in, in India. So <laughs> these are our people serving slavery here in India. Come on. Verse forty-two. 
I'll I'll turn to verse 46. Verse 46. Read that. Verse 46. And they shall be upon thee for a son and for a woman and upon thy seed forever. Uh huh. So the they here is going right back into all of these curses that we've been reading about. And there's going to be more. The they is the curses or the punishments of God. It says, those punishments shall be upon thee, or you, nation of Israel, for a sign and for a wonder. A sign is something that identifies something. It tells you where you're going, where you're coming from, tells you what's going. Like if you see a stop sign, you know to stop. That's the Underground right Railroad. Go. Say it again. Underground Railroad. The favorite yeah. Time. So uh, these signs are going to be to identify and wonder. Anybody ever wonder? Why, uh, why so-called blacks and Hispanics go through these things that we do? Why us? Why we have to be the ones that go through these conditions? Why are we the ones that's always in ghettos? And this is throughout the world. Whether you're in America, whether you're in Europe, whether you're in UK, whether you're in Russia, whether you're in India, all of these so-called blacks are always living in the same condition. Is it because we're not smart enough? Is it really because our skin color? Or is it because there was a divine intervention. What we're showing you is that there was a divine intervention involved because these are the people that made a covenant with God on Mount Sinai and they broke his commandments and now they're suffering these conditions. But if we repent and keep God's commandments and keep his rules, he's actually gonna deliver us from those, from those conditions. All right, so it says, and they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder. So we're supposed to be wondering, why am I going through all of this? How come I can never get up out of these conditions? How come I can never uh, deliver something for my children? How come we still in the ghetto? We came here up north, we left the south to flee those conditions, and we came to the north for what? During the Industrial Revolution to build a life for ourselves, build a life for our children, and now we're in the projects. Now we're in the ghetto. Now we go through uh, we abuse drugs or we abuse alcohol. These things are going to be upon us and our children forever. And we've been brainwashed. brainwashed. Say it again. We've been brainwashed since that way. Yeah, we've been smitten with madness. This is, this is a cycle. Exactly, it is a cycle. It is a cycle. From our because past. of our condition, the environments that we live in, it is a cycle. But how do we get out of it? Through repentance. Uh, read on, next slide. Come on. Verse 47. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart uh -huh. for the abundance of all things. The abundance of all things is talking about the entire planet Earth. That's the abundance of all things. We were supposed to serve God and in return, he was going to make us the greatest nation on the Earth. Just as America is the, the leader of the free world, the greatest nation on this Earth, that was supposed to be the place of the Israelites. But since we did not serve him and keep his commandments, now we're at the bottom. Verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger, uh -huh. and in thirst, and in nakedness. So for food, for water, and for clothing, we have to serve another nation for. Right? And again, this is going into a grand scale. Right? So this is not talking about any... You know, Joe Blow just going to the grocery store and being able to buy his own food. No. This is talking about a nation of people not being able to provide, to provide resources for their own nation of people. So you examine China, right? China does not depend on India to provide water. They provide water for themselves. China does not depend on Europe to provide food for their nation. No, they produce it for themselves. China doesn't uh, uh, depend on, I don't know, let's say Korea to, uh, to provide raw materials to create clothing. No, they're able to produce it for themselves. So God said for breaking his commandments, we would not be able to provide the resources to help ourselves and to push ourselves to take care of ourselves. These are basic things that we should be able to do as a nation of people. So now we have to depend on another nation of people to, to be provided for. This happened to us in slavery, and it still goes on today, right? It still goes on today. We all pay a water bill, okay? We all have to go to a grocery store that our nation doesn't own to provide for ourselves. If you look at the back of your clothes, it says made in China or made in Vietnam, 
right? But we ourselves, none of the so-called blacks, Hispanics, or Native Indians produce these things for their nation, for themselves. That's what God is saying, read. And in want of all things. Anything you want, whether you want to bury a family member, whether you want to get, uh, give birth, whether you need a birth certificate, a death certificate, tissue, a driver's license, you have to depend on another person to get it. We don't. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. And it says that he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Next slide. The, uh, so yeah, here it goes again to supplement, snap benefits, water, who owns Dasani, Fiji, Right? Who owns Lake Michigan? Mm -hmm. All these different reservoirs that we uh, get our, our water from. The food, the clothing, where do we get all these resources from? Social security, medication, like you spoke about. We, we, all, of these, uh, all of these amenities that we love and enjoy, we're not able to provide for ourselves, right? That's, these are curses from God. And then it says, read that bottom part again. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. Who had a yoke of iron upon thy necks until they have been destroyed? Until, until, meaning what? It was for a dispensation of time. So not forever they were going to have this yoke of iron on their neck. Who, who did that happen to? So-called blacks and Hispanics. Here you got a man with a yoke of iron on his neck and he's got shackles on his feet. Here, right here, we have another in Brazil, another slave with a yoke of iron on their necks. This is all common history, common facts that we know and that, that exist and that happen, but we never knew that the Bible spoke about it. What I'm showing you is to make that connection between you and the Bible. What was then prophecy is now our history. And this is how we know because it said there were going to be signs and wonders upon our children forever because we were going to forget who we were. That's why I say it should be a proverb and a byword. Nobody calls the so-called African American the tribe of Judah. Nobody calls the so-called West Indians Benjamin. Nobody calls the so-called Haitians Levi. Nobody calls the so-called Native Americans Gang. Nobody calls the so-called Seminole Indians Reuben. They don't call them no more. They call them Black, African American, Mexican, uh, Jamaican, Trinidadian. That's what they call them now. So this is why these curses were going to be upon us for us to identify who we are in these last days so that we can return to God. Next slide. And it said, again, it said it was going to be upon us uh, until we have been destroyed. Until. When did that come to pass? 1865, Emancipation Proclamation when we were so-called emancipated from slavery, right? That's when the shackles came off. And the Bible says we became a destroyed nation of people by that time, we were fully destroyed. Here we are as captives of war, and we don't even want to go back home. We love where we are today, even though we go through extreme harsh conditions and environments that we live in, we still want to be here. Read that. Verse, time verse 49. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from afar, from the from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flight. Uh -huh. So, uh, go ahead, go ahead. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. So it says, the Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth. So remember, the Americas is located where? In the Western Hemisphere. But the nations that came and conquered the Western Hemisphere was from where? The Eastern. Say it again. Egypt. Uh, no, from Europe. West. Europe. Uh, yeah, Europe. Palestine. And um, Spain, right? They came from the Eastern Hemisphere. And it says, as swift as the eagle flyeth, identifying who these people were going to be. Because what was the emblem of Spain? The eagle. What was the emblem of Germany? The eagle. What was the eagle of America and still is? Yeah. Come on. A nation of fierce counsel. Not a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. When the natives here didn't understand Spanish, they didn't understand Latin, they didn't understand English, they didn't understand French. Right? Come on. 
Verse 2. A nation of fierce counting, uh -huh. which shall not regard the person of the old, nor shall favor to the young. And we saw that in previous slides, where you had some of the young being fed to dogs, some mm. of the young were being dashed upon rocks. They showed no favor to the young that were helpless, nor the old that were helpless, that couldn't even defend themselves. They did not care. Read <laughs> on. And he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle, uh -huh. and the fruit of thy land. So these are different nations that have the evil that represents themselves as the eagle. All of this stuff is being identified in the Holy Bible <laughs> that was written thousands of years ago. I didn't write this. I don't think any of y'all wrote it. My parents didn't write it, okay? These are records that was prophecy and is now our history, okay? This is another example of them not regarding the old or the young. We got old men being burned on the stake. Here we've got a, um, a king right here, a chief that was being forced to convert into Catholicism. And if he did not uh, come to, if he did not convert to Catholicism, he was going to be burned in the state. And more examples of the not the old, nor the young. Here you've got 13 men being burned over a law, right? To, uh, to represent the 12 apostles and Christ. Read that. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people, from the one end of the earth, even unto the other. Uh -huh. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. Again, the Bible is repetitive. So we read about us being servant of the nations and serving other gods, wood and stone, right? But it's going to show how we, had, we were doing that. And we were, it says we shall be scattered among all people, from one end of the earth, even unto the other. Next slide. How was Next slide, this is Christianity, come on, next slide. Okay, so this is a depiction of uh, Caesar Borgia, all right? He was the, the illegitimate son of Pope Alexander VI, whose real name is Rodrigo Borgia, and uh, his long-term mis mis mistress, Venosa. He, uh, during the Renaissance period, he actually became the, uh, the face of Jesus or Christianity when they became back in power. So when people think that they're looking at Jesus when they see the face, you're actually looking at Caesar or Jim. Next slide. Mm -hmm. uh, so go back to read verse 64 one more time. And the Lord the shall scatter thee among all people, from the one end of the earth even unto the other. So how are we scattered amongst all people? Again, the transatlantic slave trade. We showed a slide earlier where uh, we were taken from west coast of Africa, west coast of Africa and we were scattered throughout all the South, Mid, and North Americas, okay? Mm -hmm. And to India, and to China, and to Europe, we were scattered amongst all nations. Mm -hmm. And in those nations, we served their gods. Uh, give me verse 68. Verse 68, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Stop. So it says, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Remember, what were their condition when they came out of Egypt? They were slaves. So if somebody says, if you break my commandments, or if you don't do what I tell you to do, I'm going to take you back to Egypt. What is he saying? I'm going to take you back to slavery. So he said, the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again, or in bondage again, slavery again, with what? Which ship? How did we get to the Americas? Cargo slave ships. Again, prophecy fulfilled. Read on. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. Made it just as you're reading it, that's how it's going to happen. Just as I'm telling you, that's how it's going to happen. Read it. Thou shalt see it no more again. The it right here is talking about Egypt. So he wasn't talking about literal Egypt. He was talking about another place that you're going to have be in the same condition as you were in Egypt. Here in the Americas, we, set, we, sold, we, uh, we worked in the same conditions. We served the same conditions as we did in ancient Egypt. Read and there you shall be sold. And so in there, so when you get off of those slave ships where you're going to be sold, it says you shall what? You shall be sold unto your enemies. Uh -huh. For bond men and bond women. For slave men and slave women. And no man shall buy you. But there was indentured servitude at this time. And they still practice indentured servitude today. Where you would actually contract yourself for an X amount of years. All right, whether it's to pay off a debt or to just make money, you'll serve somebody for X amount of years, but somebody will be able to come in and pay that off or be able to redeem. Here, we were not being able, nobody was able to redeem us. So this is going to nobody being able to save us. Martin Luther King tried to save us. Marcus Garvey tried to save us. 
Uh, Stokey Carmichael tried to save us. Malcolm X tried to save us. We had many uh, big uh, figures that's known today that tried to help us get out of our conditions, but they were not able to help us. Okay, so I pray everybody got some good edification out of this right here. I wish we had a lot more time uh, uh, to go over more. But again, this is Black, Hispanic, and Native American history in the Bible made live to you. So what we did was try to make this Bible come to life for you. The Bible is talking about you. It is a black, Hispanic, and Native American. All nations are written in it, but the people, God's people that's written about is talking about you. We must repent and keep God's commandments in order to get out of these conditions, to escape these conditions. This is what Christ came and died on the cross to deliver us from. All right? Thank you for your time. Hey, Shalom, Most High in Christ. Bless Officer Simakai with IUS Chicago. Officer Judah. And we just concluded a presentation at a nursing home in the south suburbs of Chicago, continuing to get this word out to everywhere we can get it to. So the, the youth, the young, the old, everybody that we can get it to, we, that's where we're going to. All praise to the Most High. So yeah, we uh, presented here at an elderly's home. Uh, the, the feedback was great. It was excellent. We actually had a uh, man that we think may be of another nation, he actually may be Northern Kingdom, but he actually came came to me and because of the presentation, he threw away Cesar Borgia, the picture that he had in his room. All right, I watched him do it, so all praise to the Most High uh, for repentance. All right? And with that, we say Shalom. Shalom, Messiah Christ bless. What is the nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. 